the computer. I'm Frank. Unfortunately, Bruce couldn't join us today. He's locked away in the danger room running some combat tests. But thankfully, we got the world's leading X-Men expert, Leroy Patterson, on the scene with us today. How's it going, bub? <laughs> well, that's a little Wolverine quote right there. But hey, Leroy, I'm going to test you. Can you name three X-Men characters? Oof, yeah, uh, we got uh, uh, Husk. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And Cannonball. Ooh, good one, good and one. And the best top tier X-Men? Ford. Oh, my, Leroy, that's incredible. Most people can only name one or two, but you yeah. named three. Is, oh, yeah. is that all the X-Men? It's most of them. Okay, yeah, cool. The important ones. Great. Well, we got Konami's X-Men, the arcade game, a classic brawler. Let's see what Husk and Forge get into. They're not in that one. They're not? They're not in that one. What? Why would you make an X-Men game without Forge? I mean, I don't know who these guys are, but let's, let's take a look. X-Men Arcade at the computer. to X-Men Arcade at the computer. Um, there's a little story going on right now. This arcade game was actually based on the like 1989 X-Men pilot. Yeah. What, what, what's the deal with that? Pride of the X-Men. So it was a uh, it was a cartoon before the 92, the classic 92 X-Men cartoon. Yeah. It was their first attempt at like a Fox TV pilot mm -hmm. and uh, apparently it didn't do too well. Um, but they expected it to do well, so they made this game based so, on that. So, so that's interesting. So this game came out in 92. So the, yeah, like, I, I love uh, Capcom beat-em-ups. Like, that, those, oh, they're, yeah. they're the kings. Konami is really interesting, though, because they did all their stuff based on, like, licensed properties. But there are Japanese developers making stuff off American properties. Mm -hmm. So the three that come to mind are The Simpsons Arcade, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which they did a lot for, and then X-Men. But both with, like, X-Men and The Simpsons beat-em-up, uh, the Simpsons beat em up was made after X after the Simpsons only had like one or two seasons. Mm -hmm. So they had to like kind of make up and fill a lot of content. So likewise with X-Men, like in the nineties, the X-Men arc show was huge. Like I loved it as like a little kid. Uh, but yeah, this was based on just a 30 minute pilot and they just went nuts with it. Yeah, for sure. Um, it was uh, much like the Simpsons one. They they didn't have a lot to go on. Yeah. So that's why there's a lot of similar enemies. So are the are the crocodile people? Are those? Is that in the show or is that unique to the game? Uh, you know, I, I couldn't answer that. Okay, I, I okay. lied about being an X Men expert. Oh what? <laughs> yeah. Was, oh, just to get here. I told Bruce he could take the day off because uh, you know, uh, yeah, I was well, gonna uh, rely on him to be an X Men expert. That, that was but, your bad. Oh shit. Shouldn't have done that. But anyway, uh, yeah. Um, they just didn't have a lot to go. So, like if you notice with the uh, the Simpsons game, Marge has the uh, the you know in hell uh, rabbit ears. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh shocked. yeah, they all just because that's another graining property. Yeah. Yeah, because it was like originally around the first or second season it was going to be revealed that she had those ears, and then they're Whoa. like, okay, and they totally <laughs> changed it. Yeah. And like, then oh, also, also in game. early Simpsons, uh, the, the originally they were playing with the idea that Krusty was also mm -hmm. Homer. Oh yeah. Just like, <laughs> it's like that been a, I feel like if Simpsons came out today as like a Netflix uh, original series <laughs> where it's like you had to have like all these cliffhangers, yep. then you would definitely do that. That would but. be a good episode four <laughs> cliffhanger. Uh, but anyways, my history with the X Men. So I was born in 91, uh, so I'm like younger than you, but like I feel like X-Men was everywhere in the early 90s. Like I had the action figures, I watched the cartoon, I have distinct memories of playing this game at Chuck E. Cheese. Mm -hmm. I remember they had the six person cabinet at Chuck E. Cheese. It was like the centerpiece of that Chuck E. Cheese. Like in yeah. the back room it had its own like, like it was like the biggest place. And I remember as a little kid going up to this cabinet, barely being able to see over the counter uh, and just like playing with all these bigger kids and just being like, man, this is fucking, this is amazing. Yeah. Uh, I really wish, like, again, it's one of those things, like, when people talk about nostalgia, it's like, oh, yeah, that, like, feeling of just, like, being a kid in the arcade playing X-Men was like, oh, my God. Oh, I was going nuts. Uh, but, you know, right now we're playing the Xbox Live Arcade Port, which was released in 2010. Uh, this is actually, oh, you just got an achievement, dude. Wow. Holy crap. Is it for spamming the hell out of Probably. the <laughs> yeah, exactly. out of Colossus's yeah. move? Uh, that's the other thing, too. Uh, why I like this port, in, uh, there's no penalties for using continues, so you can die as many times as you want, and every time you respawn, uh, you get three mutant abilities back. So if you want to beat the game fast, you can just spam your mutant abilities. Oh, X-Men X for 82. Uh, so you're saving content. Good, good, good. Oh, uh, yeah, so you can just spam your, your shit constantly. But, uh, you know, that's not... If you're playing this in the arcade, you'd be draining quarters doing that. But the, the funny thing to do in the arcade though was to uh, to unlock the box to you know the uh, the coin slot area yeah. so you could turn up the volume on the game. Oh, what the hell! And then uh, uh, and then when no when the arcade's like quieter than usual, you just start going. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, <laughs> and you piss everyone well, off because they're like, what the fuck? Well, is I remember that? when this game came out on Xbox Live Arcade, my friends and I would play. <laughs> That's all we would do. We would join full six person lobbies and everyone would just be spamming their mutant abilities. And it's like, I don't think, I don't think this is how the game was made. Yeah, uh, it, was a, it was a real funny way. Oh, <laughs> that's why for this playthrough I picked Cyclops because you gotta have to like aim your, your laser blast, give it a little more precision. Um, nah, I just want everything dead. But yeah, as a kid I liked X Men, but I didn't have like a huge attachment to it. But like it, I collectively, like I, I mean, I I dressed up as Wolverine for a Halloween. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was cool. But then I never really cared about the X Men until later when. Um, they made X-Men vs. Street Fighter. Like, I was obsessed oh, yeah. with Capcom and Street Fighter. So when they made X-Men vs. Street Fighter, uh, uh, Marvel vs. Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom, I'm like, that's how I knew all the X-Men characters. Like, that was my attachment to them. Uh, and then, like, there was the X-Men movies, which were fine, but I didn't, like, care that much about. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, um, just recently started reading comics and got into them. But what is your complete history with, like, X-Men? Uh, but launching point, the X-Men arcade game. Do you remember, like, when this came out in arcades? Oh what was your, like, you know, what was yeah. your experience? So, um, we used to go every weekend to this uh, arcade called uh, Golf and Stuff. Okay. You may remember from the uh, Karate Kid film. Oh, nice. That they go to many times. Uh, I love that arcade. And Where was it? Where was it? Was it in it's LA? in Downey. Okay, cool. And, uh, you know, you used to have the giant water slide and whatnot. Yeah. And mini golf. But, uh, yeah, when this came out, because it was massive. If, if, you know, you were lucky enough to have the, the six player cabinet. Yeah. The thing was huge. It's a giant purple cabinet and you with walk two wide you... screens. That's the other thing, too, is like, it's a, it was a, this is an anamorphic widescreen mm -hmm. game uh, because they had like two widescreens. Well, again, for its time, completely unheard of. And I loved Marvel, and there wasn't a lot of Marvel based like games or anything. You know, yeah. there, you, there was a couple of NES games. Wait, and, are like, you, Leroy, comics. are you saying before uh, Disney uh, <laughs> spent billions of dollars inflating uh, an entire uh, company, mm -hmm. Marvel wasn't everywhere in the world? No. Wait, there, there was no. a time. Hold on, there there's was a, a time. What? What? Okay, I don't believe you, but you're apparently you're the expert. <laughs> All right. But yeah, and, and so it was so neat to be able to go in and not only play characters that I really liked. Mm. Growing up, because I, I love Colossus and Wolverine, and like those are two of my favorite. What's Colossus' characters. real name? Peter. Peter Maxim or uh, Peter. Uh, 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 I forgot. I'm not an expert. Okay, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's Russian it's though, Peter, right? Peter. Yeah, and his, his, his sister was Majik. Yeah. And. Uh, blah. They are they all Russian, and and they, yeah, I I love these characters. Gonna screw it as well. Look at that. I li I like. Sit down. I like the blog. Sit down. He's cool as hell. Uh, but yeah, so you you played the game and like. Um, like beyond the X-Men arcade game, like what was your attachment? Like how long have you been reading X-Men? Like did you watch the cartoon? Like what, yeah. Like... I've been reading X-Men since probably like, just started like maybe late 80s. I was still a little oh, okay, young. Cool. Yeah. But like definitely early 90s. Cartoon came out in like, what was it, 92? Mm -hmm. I love that show so much. I, I've, I've seen those first three episodes so many times with, you know, Morph being left behind and just, oh. I cried alongside Wolverine, Morph. You know, and and so yeah, the, the, like I I enjoyed the the comics enough, but the X cartoon was what really solidified my love for the series. Yeah, and another achievement. Oh man, and uh, I did it. And so getting to play this game, and then there was a lot of the other NES games. Um, the, that first X Men one was pretty fun. The 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 following ones not as much. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're all bad, but they were fun for the for back in the day. Um, but it was nice to have like something that's a very solid, awesome brawler set in the X-Men universe with characters I like and it was it was super like I, I dumped so much money into this game one, one thing I always noted that's interesting is like now that I'm like you know doing research in the comics and like history of that but like uh, as like when I played this game later uh, this was before like this is before Wolverine was depicted as being like yellow and blue. His like mm -hmm. the current costume that we know from like again my context being X Men or Street Fighter, the like bright yellow suit. Yeah. And this is like suit is like orange and yellow. Uh, and he, so he went through different costumes. Yeah, and, and that, so like that is that something them, too yeah. with X Men? Like, cause like when did X Men originally launch? Like seventies oh, or dude, yeah, seventies uh, I believe. Cause they, it was in in it was more of like a uh, a statement to yeah. you know. A lot of different things. The, the, the X Men and, and their differences stood for a lot of different things growing up. And uh, watch out for those plants back there. Oh, plants they'll, they'll get you. Oh, shoot. Oh, sorry, they're dead. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then uh, um, just over the years, they've had different teams and different things. You know, like like uh, there was you know the OG team with uh, uh, Cyclops and Iceman and all them. And oh, then, that's right. Yeah. And yeah. then at one point, they all got uh, captured. 
And so they they created the the, the new X Men team, which had Wolverine. And had, oh, so like Wolverine wasn't always a part of like, the X Men. He was not the OG X Men. That's nuts because yeah. like he's now seen as like the like, X Men. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's crazy. I mean, that's like that's what's so crazy about like that's what's also intimidating about getting into comic books is it's like where the fuck do you start? Mm -hmm. uh, so well, there's like, there's been so many reboots over the yeah, years and, and so many and, different series. And like and, even looking at art, like there's and stuff in the '80s is so colorful and like goofy, and then in the '90s everything had this kind of cool attitude to yeah. it. Yeah. And then I feel like everything in the early 2000s, like I personally am not a fan. <laughs> like just kind of mm -hmm. looks, uh, I don't know. Um, like anything pre '90s is kind of hard to read because. For the longest time, comics always did that, like, explaining their motivations through dialogue. Yes, yes. You know, they, they, they didn't have uh, any kind of stage direction or anything going on, so it was just like, well, I bet if I hit him with this proton cannon, he'll go down. And yeah, then, and oh, wow, the proton cannon didn't work as well as I hoped. I wonder if he'll understand <laughs> if I go through and do this. And it's just, it, it, no one talks like well, people talk. That's why that's why I was cracking up. So in order to like prepare for this episode, I read uh, two books. I read X-Men Days of Future Past, which mm -hmm. collected a few comics from like early 80s. And I also yeah. read the standalone graphic novel, which is uh, God Loves, Man Kills, which was yeah. like great. Oh yeah. But cool. talking about like Days of Future Past, like that was just like collected books from the original, like, from a, a, a run. Yeah. But like... Reading it, it's like, well, we better go down here and talk to Nightcrawler. <laughs> yeah. Asterisk. Nightcrawler is talking about his feelings from issue 82 on newsstands yeah. now. Like, there is advertisements. Dash like, editorial. Yeah, like, yeah, editorial. Yeah. This means, this this is actually what a bomb is. Like, yeah. there's all this, like... No reference to, wow, this is as crazy as when Magneto uh, uh, stole all the orphans from the orphans. By this issue in Issue 33. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was like, what the... But then also, characters would be talking, and it's like, well, I bet I could disarm that... that that missile if I use my proton spray which will deactivate the nuclear it was just yeah. like what the fuck uh, it's so goofy but the colors are so bright yeah um, and, and there's some really classic like panels and great oh did, did we miss stuff? welcome to die I was talking over it or did we already did that just happen welcome to die did I miss that uh, we may have okay that's fine that's another classic line in this welcome to die you know just getting talked about X-Men that's the thing brawls you can play without even <laughs> focusing on it okay this is a character named Windigo yeah uh, he's in days of future past what or like the comic series mm -hmm. uh, what the fuck is Windigo it doesn't isn't he from Canada along with Wolverine? Or yeah, him and Wolverine have fought a whole bunch of times, and he's kind of, he, he's, he's fine. Like, Sabretooth is a much better villain. See, that's the thing with X-Men, I and feel they, like... they have a lot of kind of similar There's so many, there's and, so many fucking yeah. characters that all look like each other. Yeah. So there's Wendigo, which just looks like a more raw Wolverine, but then there's mm -hmm. also Sabretooth, so isn't he also like a more, like, Wolverine? I don't know. There's, there's too many characters, but the thing I want to know, um, God, there's, there's so much I want to talk about about X-Men, but like... <laughs> Uh, reading the comics, there's a character named Kitty Pride, yeah. who's like, oh, when when I think of X Men, that, that's not like who comes to mind, like, but like she's so pivotal in all these X Men books, and it's like, what, mm -hmm. wait, who the fuck, like, how come Kitty Pride wasn't like, was she in the '90s cartoon? How come I didn't like? Why isn't no. Kitty Pride more popular? So she was in that Pride of the X Men pilot, yeah, which this game's based yeah. on, yeah, and uh, not in the game though, for yeah. some reason, and and so she. I, I, I don't know the exact reasoning, but I guess she didn't resonate with people, and so she was one of the... Her and Dazzler were, like, two of the main who didn't really make it into the beginnings of that cartoon. Yeah, and, and Dazzler is another thing where... So you can play as this girl named Dazzler, who I thought was Jubilee for the longest time, <laughs> uh, but Dazzler's another just... Again, there's, like, five iconic characters you can play as, and then Dazzler, some random... But that, that character was made up for the pilot, right? Yeah, she, she was, like, a later addition to X-Men, if, if I remember correctly, and, like... She, they, they wanted to do a lot with her though. They wanted to make like music CDs with her. Oh, geez, full on marketing team. Okay. Yeah, it, it was it was gonna be a whole big thing that didn't really take off anywhere, and you don't really see her mentioned a lot anymore. At least not. Oh fuck it, I'm gonna bring back Dazzler. What are some other good X Men games? I already talked about my thing is X Men vs Street Fighter. Oh, yeah. Uh, like that's how I knew X Men. There was one game made by Capcom in '94 called X Men Mutant Apocalypse, which is like mm. a a side scrolling action game that kind of looks and sounds like Mega Man. Uh, I, that was like the, I think that was the first X-Men, that was like the first SNES game I emulated. I remember downloading that through dial-up and playing it and loving oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I found out there's an, a Quake conversion mod called, uh, Ravages of the Apocalypse. And it's a Quake, total Quake conversion oh, wow. mod that was sold in stores. And you go around, you shoot at clones of the X-Men. Oh my god, I so think I played that. you're blowing up Psylocke and, uh, Cyclops. Yeah, I played that, holy crap. Uh, there's footage of it online, it looks fucking, like, ridiculous. I totally ridiculous. forgot about it, that game was great. Uh, and then there's X-Men Legends, which was like an yeah. action RPG, which looks awesome. Those I never fun. played it, but it's like, I don't know what that hold up if I played today, because I love action RPGs. Uh, it looks fun and cheesy. But then it's there's good stuff. Yeah, and then there's um but then I feel like the sequel to that was uh oh what the fuck's it called? Um 
Marvel Super Marvel Heroes on 360. Yeah. Uh, isn't that like a really good game? Those are great. Um, there's a lot of my probably my favorite are the being the, fucked up by these killer bees. <laughs> other than this game, which is amazing, um, the the ones on Genesis. Okay. The the one just called X Men, and then there was X Men Two. It was like Mutant Revolution or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, those were awesome. Like. They they ca especially for old school Genesis like they captured the feel of like every X Men felt different yeah you know you had like Wolverine and Gambit and like you you felt very different like like I loved playing Wolverine in those games um, those were a ton of fun uh, probably my, my favorite even like like closely related to the X Men thing is right now this VR game called Gorn Gorn because is that is that like the is that the is is Gorn the like uh, arena game yeah where you're gladiator combat so they had they added Wolverine claws to it where they uh, pop out okay and it's it's some of the funnest thing I, like I, I feel like Wolverine just rampaging all right so that's and... that's the best X-Men game Gorn. yeah yeah Hell Gorn yeah. Gorn and VR and then we kind of you talk like Lucy talked about adaptations with Legion but um, mm -hmm. yeah I, I feel like X-Men the original movie was one of like there was that and Spider-Man came out around the same yeah. time and that's when Hollywood realized like oh there's we, there's money in these comic books. Eh? Even before that, you had Blade, which was awesome. Oh yeah. And, like, no one, no one gives enough credit. Was to. uh, was the Crow also a comic book movie, or is that? Yeah, the Crow was a comic. Um, yeah, you, you could count it as that. <laughs> okay. It, it, it didn't wear it on its sleeve yeah. like like many of the other movies. But it's like there's all these like '90s adaptations that yeah, people kind of don't talk about. Uh, there's a uh, Tank sure. Girl. Tank Girl. Oh, Spawn. That's what Spawn, I was thinking. Spawn. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, there's the Juggernaut. The, my memory with the Juggernaut, I remember like one of the first internet videos that like, yeah. first YouTube videos was I'm the Juggernaut uh -huh. bitch. Yeah. Which eventually made its way into fucking oh my God. X3. I love that so Jesus much. Jesus Christ. But I, remember, I love X3. People crap on it so much, but I think it's such a great movie. Isn't that where the finale is like they're on a bridge? Uh, partially, yeah. yeah. And then they, they fight on uh, um, like the island where they're, they're creating the mutant cure yeah. and all that. I thought that thing was fun. One thing I love with Juggernaut is how Capcom, again, I'm talking about a different game, but I love how Capcom mm -hmm. used the scale of the Juggernaut. Like, he is so massive in mm -hmm. those fighting games. Uh, yeah. that he looks kind of puny, you know, he looks kind of puny right here. Mm -hmm. not, not as intimidating. But yeah, yeah I love it. He's in, like almost size of Sentinel and Yeah, stuff, I love an X-Men yeah. or he, He's fucking huge. Massive dude. Um, but yeah, uh, like, I'm assuming everyone, like, nice lost job. their shit over Logan. Uh, over I, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not someone who followed X-Men, so it's like, I, I liked it, but I, I like that it was a rated R movie that made a lot of money, and yeah. the tone of it was adult. Like, even I feel like. I think one of the opening scenes is like they find yeah, they yeah. find Logan in his like limousine or whatever, mm -hmm. and there's that really brutal fight scene. It's like whoa, He's just cutting off limbs. Yeah, like, oh like, my god, this is awesome. So more of that would be rad. So yeah. Logan's good. How were the Wolverine spinoff movies? Uh, <laughs> okay, all right. But so, it, doesn't he go to Japan in one? That's so bad. Um, oh, but it's Japan. So the, the the first one, uh, the first like ten minutes of it, okay. ten minutes or so, are great. Is 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 it's, that the one? Is that the one where the the like pre VFX screener leaked online? Yes. <laughs> I have that thing on DVD. It's so funny. Hell yeah! But um, it's it's great because uh, like it shows Wolverine and Sabretooth through history. They're fighting in the Civil War. Yeah. They're fighting through all this. Thing. Wait, it uh, is civil, so neat. In terms of Civil War, you're talking about like Marvel Civil no, War. No, I'm talking or? about legitimate history Civil War. Wait, what? Yeah, it, it shows them going through history, fighting in all these wars, and and you know, because because they're incredibly old. Um, that they sounds great. So fast. That's, oh, it's so uh, good. And, and then you I, get... I love the movie Universal Soldier because mm -hmm. it opens with, uh, like, a robbery uh, in the Civil War, but the guy pulls out a laser gun. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I love goofy sci-fi shit like mm -hmm. that. Like, I love it. Another game I, I want to play is Wolverine Origins for PS3. Oh, my I've God. Heard, I've heard so that's amazing. Good. I've heard that's amazing. So I actually good. ordered it off Amazon. Yeah. Uh, I want to play, play that. Play the hell out. It's... it's it's like Logan. It's like they, they kind of took the, you know, like, oh, wow, that works really well for Wolverine. Let's make it a movie. Fuck yeah. um, just because it's it's so brutally violent and so much fun. Great action. Yeah, like, I mean, I mean, it's like that kind of God, God of War, like, yeah. DMC, just hack and slash, which I love. Oh, it's so I feel like that will be a good podcast game. And there's a lot of good, like, secrets and, like, hidden collectibles yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I love that game. I played that thing so much. Hell yeah. Well, uh, yeah, the reason, like, I wanted to do this episode is, like, I love, I love this game as a kid. Like, I bought the Xbox Live version of it. Um, we're not speaking so much about the mechanics of it, just just shooting the shit over X-Men, but like, it is weird to me, I've never been a huge comic book fan, but X-Men is just one of those things that I feel like everyone likes, because yeah, mm -hmm. X-Men, as you said, um, at, like, I love Magneto talking about, like, art in the context of, like, history and politics, mm -hmm. and X-Men have always stood for, like, others, you right, know, like, whether right, that's, right. like, African Americans, or, like, you know, like, LGBT, like, mm -hmm. people can read the story and identify themselves, I mean, isn't, like, 
I mean, like, there's lots. There's, isn't there like some Jewish characters too? Or uh, yeah. like I think Kitty is Kitty Pride Jewish. I forget. I don't know. But well, like Magneto. Uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's <laughs> yeah, 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 Magneto, he, like from the Holocaust. He's hardcore, yeah. Yeah, so like, and so I read, um, "Man Loves God Kills," and it's like, oh, this is like the like. I feel like you only need to read that to get what X Men is like. That "Man Loves God Kill" or yeah, whatever "God God Kills Man Love," whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, that book is basically it's also the plot for X Two, but basically there's like a crazy minister who is like. Uh, God says humans are this. These mutants must be the work of the They're devil. An abomination. Yeah, yeah, let's get rid of all these others. And you can read that as just like, oh yeah, it's eighty, it's Reagan it's era, eighties yeah, politics. Yeah, get rid yeah. of the gays. Get rid of the blacks. Like mm -hmm. all this stuff is just like, oh, and it's and it's and, and again, like you said, I, that that book is done in a way where it's like, it's it's very easy to read, but it's not so like, oh, this stands for this. Like it's a little, it's a, it's 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 well written enough where it's like you get it. Whereas uh. Days of Future Past and earlier X-Men stuff is so just like, oh, to understand what we mean, turn to page 22 and read this issue. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, I like that book, and like, I think maybe that's why, I think also why X-Men is great is like, it's, the, the cast of characters are so recognizable that it's like, I've always thought like Cyclops and like Wolverine is cool. Like I'm not nuts about Colossus, but it's like mm -hmm. through this cast of characters, people can identify with one of them, and then oh, I love X Men. You know what yeah. I mean? Like there's so many people that there's so many again like Street Fighter. I don't care about every single Street Fighter character, but I love like Guile. I love Ryu. I love Ken. And it's like yeah. oh, it's like you, there's enough dudes in there that you love and you identify with that it, that becomes your thing. And then someone else feels as strongly about like Zangief or something. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's like, like oh, you're into that too. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So it's just this really big group of characters. Something yeah, for everyone. Yeah, and it's that's what's so crazy is like. I feel like if someone playing this today, like the Blob and Wendigo aren't fucking as. Pr I don't know if they're at prominent today, and like I haven't seen the newer X Men films, but mm -hmm. it's like you know shit cycles out. Like yeah, you said Iceman was like one of the original X Men. It's like oh what the fuck? I only know of Iceman because of uh, the Street Fighter games, but yeah. I think he's in. I kind of did like what was the X Men First Class? Yeah, I thought that was good. I really liked oh, that. Oh, that was great. I, yeah, I, was I that love directed by the Kick Ass guy? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, why I was good. Matthew Vaughn. Fuck. Yeah. I also love. That dude's amazing. I also love Fossbender. Yeah, yeah, I thought I thought First Class was actually pretty good. Um, and then I haven't seen it, but how is Days of Future Past the film adaptation? It's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's fun. It's it's it starts suffering that the problems that the newer X Men movies have, or is uh, making Mystique like the main hero. Is Mystique uh, Jennifer Lawrence? Yeah. Oh, there it is. That's that's just that, just that, because she just, was. Yep, yeah. That sucks. She she was doing so well. They're yeah. like, well, we gotta put her though. We can't have oh, her yeah. be a psychic. And Mystique was always better as like like I loved uh, Rebe Rebecca Remains Famous in yeah. those original X Men movies. She played such a good like sidekick and someone to like really get in deep and mess Hell with yeah. the group, but she's not Magneto, she's not Cyclops yeah. or Wolverine, you know, she's not a lead character. Yeah, it's just fucking Hollywood crunching the numbers, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, one thing to talk about back to the game mechanics is, again, we're playing on the console, uh, or, but even if we were emulated, you could just press start infinite number of times. Yeah. Uh, I would always tune out in boss battles and, and brawlers because it's like, you would just lose all your quarters and you'd have to go home. But playing this now, oh, you can just dump all, you can just play infinitely, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. Oh, damn, that was Mystique. See? There she is. Ruining everything again. I hate this kind of shit. I think this does like a boss rush thing. Uh, where it's like, oh, that wasn't the real boss. Now you gotta kill this guy. Again. Also, uh, yeah, we missed the welcome to die line, but like, I love like, anytime Magneto talks, it's just fucking, it's dope as hell. Um, last point I wanted to touch into uh, is, uh, yeah, like I said, I got into comics this year. And I'm 27 now, but at the beginning of the year I was 26. But like, it seemed really funny being 26 year old and finally like really getting into comics. Mm -hmm. Like I had read like Watchmen like when the movie was coming out. Like I've I read like a few iconic Batman graphic novels. Like I'm you know, I've read a few graphic novels, but like um, for Christmas in 2017, my he's just spamming the. <laughs> in Christmas of 2017, my friend Spencer got me the Fade Out, which is an image book by uh, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips, and it's about. The Fade Out is about a Hollywood screenwriter in the 40s trying to solve, like, a murder on his uh, movie studio. And it's this very specific, like, this is about Holly 1940s Hollywood, and it's written in the style of a noir. Uh -huh. And it's like, wow, this, oh, this is what comics can be? Yeah. And then I started reading everything else by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. They have a crime series called Criminal, which is like, it's like fucking, like, reading Grand Theft Auto or, like, a 70s uh, Scorsese film. It's just, like, all this intense crime shit. And it's like, oh, and then so I started exploring more stuff by Image, and I found this really cool, like, uh, like feminist like romance series called Twisted Romance and it's just like man there's like a lot of cool shit now that I'm poking through and now the addiction's grown to where I'm now following not that crazy but I'm following two two books every month I'm following Killer nice. Be Killed I'm following uh, this new book called uh, uh, Ice Cream Man which is like a Stephen King like horror series and it's just like this is a really fun hobby to get into uh, we also just beat the X-Men so now the world Heck is saved yeah. but um 
Oh, the game is not over yet. Oh, no. What, 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 what do you mean? <laughs> the struggle of X-Men will be continued. Is this now going to just advertise? In issue three. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Why does it say the game is not over yet? Oh, the ga why does it say the game is not over? <laughs> the, the game is clearly over. Uh, I do like these old X-Men panels. Are they showing like actual panels from the book? Oh, that's kind of cool. I really do like that. This is a pretty fun uh, credit sequence. Oh, there's Nightcrawler. Some bad Photoshop on that thing. No, it, that's, it that's, Chris. that's Chris. That's <laughs> Chris. They had to like scan it and then pixelate it. Mm -hmm. Cabinet design. Okay, is that the Dazzler? Yep, that, See? that's Dazzler. No, right no there. one ever knows or recognizes her. Everyone talks about Jubilee. No one talks Fukum, about Fukami. Dazzler. I'm gonna see what happens if I press A. No, I don't know. I kind of I want to see the whole credit sequence. <laughs> Whatever, I'll let it roll as I keep talking. But um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Comics is a really fun addiction. I've been like tweeting about books I've been reading. Uh, there's so many books I do want to read. Also, I want to read like Paper Girls. I want to mm -hmm. read Preacher, which I've heard is like oh, yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. I want to. The same guy who wrote Preacher is it Garth Ennis or what's yeah. his name? He did uh he did like a series of the Punisher that oh, I really want to read. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tr Transmetropolitan, I want to read Alan Moore's From Hell. There's like so much stuff and it's fun getting into a new hobby because now it's like, oh, there's so much I can explore. Oh, the game's not, not over yet, we just re repeat it. But uh, yeah, I don't, I'm into comics, so my question to the audience is, what are your favorite comics and uh, what are your what books are you currently reading uh, as we cycle through our eternal hell? Leroy, real fast, what are some of your favorite uh, comics and uh, what are any issues you're currently reading? Or like so, books? Uh, Huge Marvel fan. Um, one of my favorite series is World War Hulk. Yeah. It's just Hulk is the most pissed off he's ever been, and he comes back to Earth and is like, "Look, I want the heads of Iron Man and Mr. Fantastic, and you know, basically like the Marvel Illuminati." And he's like, "I they, they betrayed me, so I want them dead. If not, then I'm killing everyone." Yeah. And it's everyone going, "Oh my God, what are we gonna do to stop this?" And it's it's so good, such a good run. Um, and he fight, ends up fighting, like, like uh, in one of the side stories of it, he goes to the X-Men uh, uh, compound and is like, look, I want Professor X, bring him to me. And Wolverine's like, screw that. Bum rushes him, Hulk throws him three miles away. And uh, and he breaks Colossus' arms, like he throws down a juggernaut and beats the hell out of him. Mo uh, uh, Wolverine comes back on a stolen motorcycle and uh, uh, he punches him so hard that like he knocks him stupid for for like days, like, like he's mess, like he screws everyone in the X-Men, it's so good. Yeah. Wait, and what, what's um, it called again? World War Hulk. World War Hulk. All right, I'll put, I'll put a link yeah. to that in the description. That one's great. Um, anything by Mark Miller, I'm a big fan of his stuff. Uh, his stuff gets a lot of crap for being really crass and stuff, but like Where's kick Mark? ass. Oh, okay. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. Nemesis is awesome. They haven't made it into a movie yet, but it's so good. It's, it's like if someone with, with Batman's, the, the, the main tagline was, what if the Joker was Batman? Oh, you what's know, it called? Uh, Nemesis. Nemesis. You know, he's got all the, the resources and the, the skills. Oh, hell and the ability, yeah. But he does some really messed up stuff to, Nemesis. like, hero police officers hell yeah. and stuff. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap so the episode up because we've been, we've been going, we've been run, running over. But uh, Nemesis, and then what's the, what's the X-Men one again? Uh, World War Hulk. World War Hulk, hell yeah. yeah. And then, uh, yeah, let, let us know in the comments below what, what, what are your favorite comics, what current books are you reading. Let me know. There's lots of shit to check out. We did it. The X-Men saved the day. We killed Pyro twice. He was that bad. We just had to make sure he wouldn't come back. I can't wait for Infinity War. I just, <laughs> I just want to say that. Okay. So that was X-Men Arcade Game, the Konami Brawler, released in 1992. We played the 360 Xbox Live Arcade version. This game is uh, its really charming. I love the bright X-Men colors, the soundtrack, the like cheesy vocal translations. When this game came out on Xbox Live Arcade, it was so fun playing with friends and just jumping into random people's lobbies, spamming the mutant abilities. Uh, it's a really fun nostalgia trip. I like this game. Playing it back in the day at Chuck E. Cheese with that six-person purple cabinet. Oh, gorgeous. Uh, but yeah, it's a fun game. Uh, if you're a fan of the X-Men, it's like a trip anytime you play these Konami games because of the liberties they take. But uh, yeah, I really like it. Um, not the best game in the world, but a really strong thumbs up. If you had the six-person cabinet, two thumbs up. Mm. Leroy, what do you oh, think? Oh, my the God. expert. Oh, you smell that? Oh, so good. I love this. It's easily one of my favorite beat-em-ups. Hell yeah. Um, so good. So many memories associated with this going to arcades and playing it. I have it on my main cabinet at home. Yeah. I play it there. I would love it. It's easily top five Ooh, hell arcade yeah. games for me. Hell yeah. How many thumbs? Oh, all of them. Oh, two thumbs up. Oh, oh yeah. Hell yeah. Well, anyways, uh, as he said before, let me know, uh, yeah, what's your favorite, like, X-Men book? What's your favorite comics? What are you reading currently? I do recommend, if you want to check out an X-Men book, is it God God Loves, Man Kills? There you go. There you go. Really good graphic novel. I read it in one sitting. It was the basis for X2. 
Uh, it's set in the 80s, but it's timeless. Very good. Uh, and then what was that spinoff? She-Hulk? No. World War Hulk. World War Hulk. Okay. Yeah, that sounds so good. cool. Uh, anyways, send us emails at the computer show at gmail.com. The episode ran long, otherwise we would have dove into them. But yo, maybe next week we'll get into more emails. Bruce will be back one day. We'll see. Uh, maybe he fixes his eyes. Won't wear those stupid glasses around here anymore. Anyways, uh, follow us on Twitter. I'm at Frank Howley. I'm at Human Tech Board. Oh yeah, and then Leroy, you do YouTube stuff, you do Twitter stuff. Plug. What do you anything? Yeah, go to Giphy.com. Oh, oh yeah. Um, look, Leroy Patterson or the Human Tech Board up there on Giphy. Giphy's awesome. I'm not just saying it because I work there. He does work for <laughs> Giphy, so he's he uh, he invented the GIF. I well, I mean that's kind of three of us did. Yeah, but, there you, you know. go. There you go. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, uh, YouTube everywhere. Oh yeah, I'll put links below. Uh, thanks for watching at the computer. Leroy will be back next week. We'll be playing Mortal Kombat too. Very excited. And then I'll make sure Bruce comes back. I'll uh, I'll have to bribe him. I'll I'll, I'll decorate the set with Overwatch stuff. Uh, put some nice fashion out. He'll he'll come come in like a little rat he is. Anyways, thanks for watching at the computer. Mm -hmm.